la senyora Jana Arcoa, els equips d'avui present... Welcome along. It may only be the first day of the group games in the UEFA Women's Champions League, but this is a game that's fit for a final. Two of the heavyweights of women's football go head-to-head -to -head tonight as Barcelona host Arsenal. Barcelona thrashed Chelsea 4-0 in last year's final to be crowned champions of Europe, and they'll be hoping to pick up where they left off by putting another English side to the sword. But the Gunners won't be rolling over after an unbeaten start to their season so far. And while Barcelona had to celebrate that final in an almost empty stadium due to COVID, tonight there are fans here for one of the most anticipated games of the Champions League this season. The stage is set at the Johan Cruyff Arena for another fantastic European night under the lights. Well, Arsenal had to come through two rounds of qualifying to get to this point, winning all of their fixtures, conceding just the one goal along the way. As for Barcelona, they, of course, qualified directly for the group stage as a result of being the reigning champions. They're aiming to become only the fourth club to defend their title in this competition. I'm delighted to have the former lead striker, Lucy Ward, alongside me. Lucy... What a fixture this is going to be. We can see the players just getting ready in the tunnel there. This will be a real demonstration of intent, won't it, to prove where both teams are at at this point of the season. Yeah, it definitely will. Both had a great start to their respective season in the league and 
people scoring goals for fun and Arsenal have not played a team of Barcelona's quality yet this season so it's a really good test to, to, for them to see where they're at. You see the Barcelona captain Alexia Pideas standing waiting ready to get the action underway. Lucy, who are you most looking forward to seeing on that pitch? Because there are some real star names on that field tonight. Yeah, and we, we watch how Barcelona play, and they're so regimented and structured that they're that good at that, that they, they, they actually look quite fluid in the way that they play. So I think the three mid centre midfielders in particular, be here. it's so interesting to see. I'm really looking forward to see how Kim Little particularly copes, because she's a world-class player who would fit in seamlessly into this Barcelona centre midfielder. So that's where I'm looking forward to seeing tonight. Well, the players are ready and waiting. Off they go through the tunnel. Of course, Barcelona had a blistering start to their domestic league so far, winning all five of their league games, scoring 35 goals in the process and conceding just the one goal. At the weekend, Barcelona beat Alaves by nine goals to one, despite falling behind after 16 minutes. And in that game, there were nine different goal scorers. As for Arsenal, their form isn't too bad either coming into this one. They've secured four consecutive wins in the Women's Super League, and they topped the table on goal difference from Tottenham Hotspur after beating Aston Villa on Saturday by four goals to nil. Well, that is a noise the Barca women and Arsenal will not want to forget any time soon. That Champions League anthem ringing around the stadium. Just two Champions League meetings between the two sides before today. Back in 2012, when Arsenal won both the first and second legs with an aggregate score of 7-0. But Barcelona, of course, are a much improved team with a new challenge awaits the visitors today. This is how Barcelona will be lining up Seven changes since their 9-1 battering of Alaves. Sandra Banos is back in goal. She missed the last two matches, and that'll be a big boost for Barcelona. Alexia Budeas scored her 150th Barca goal not that long ago. She's their joint top scorer so far this season and will be a serious threat. She captains their side today. <laughs> There's going to be a bit of a trophy presentation. UEFA will be handing out last season's best player awards for the Champions League to Alexia Pideas, Banos, Paredes and Jenny Hermoso. It will be a great way to acknowledge last season's achievements. Here at the Johan Cruyff Stadium there is Sandra Banos. Picking up that trophy from last season. Of course, fans restricted from the Champions League final because of the COVID pandemic. They are out in force here at the Johan Klo Stadium. Marina Paredes also picking up her trophy. Big cheer for the captain, Alexia Pudeas. And there we 
see Jenny Hermoso, who's not featured yet this season due to an ankle injury. She is in the squad today, though she's on the bench and can be called upon if needed. And there is that big award for Alexia Puteas, Player of the Year. A well-deserved award as well for her. And I'm sure getting this trophy right ahead of this game will give her such a huge boost as well. Big confidence boost. fans out in force at the Johan Cruyff Stadium. The referee this evening, Jana Adamkova from the Czech Republic. She'll be assisted by Lucy Rajaktova and Susanna Spindlerova. And the fourth official tonight is Lucy Sulkova. Two hugely experienced captains. You can see now the line at four, Arsenal. Two changes since their last Women's Super League outing. Viviana Miedemark was the joint top goal scorer in the Champions League two years ago. She's already got nine goals in eight games in all competitions this season. She starts up front for Arsenal. Have the highly experienced Kim Little in their side to lead their way. She captains the side tonight. Almost ready to get underway in this inaugural group stage. The Barcelona women will have to try and stop the goal scoring machine that is Vivian Miedemar. As the players take the knee to continue the message that racism and discrimination has no place in society. We are underway here at the Johan Klo Stadium in Barcelona, the reigning champions. Barcelona, who outclassed England champions Chelsea in last season's final, will be hoping to kickstart their title defence. But they'll have to get through a dangerous Arsenal side whose manager, Jonas Irval, says can compete with the very best teams in the world. Lucy Ward, what a match we've got here. This really is a game that is fit for a final, isn't it? But they've got to come up against each other and it will show the rest of the sides in this Champions League what both sides are made of. Absolutely, it's just such an incredible game to start for, for us or for both teams, but quite ominous seeing all those awards being given out at the, at the beginning. And that should motivate Arsenal, but also be a little bit daunting. And straight away, Barcelona trying to get in on the attack. Well pushed out the side, though. Mariona Caldente trying to get in there early, testing the Arsenal defence. And that is what they do so well. We've seen them get those goals early, especially in last season's final as well, putting the pressure on early. And there is a bit of pressure already. Asisata Shuala putting the pressure on Zinsberger. Yeah, and Arsenal know how Barcelona are going to play, and, it, and it's up to but up to Arsenal whether it's going to be a goal fest or whether they're going to keep it as compact as possible because they have got the players to hurt Barca on the break and it's just about controlling the game and not giving any chances away particularly early on. Well, Mati just loses out there into the feet of BT. Maybe Arsenal just trying to shrug off a couple of early nerves in this match. Maria Leon. Sinigorcevic. Yes, with a nice ball over to Graham Hansen. 
Graham Hansen again sends that ball into the box. Shuala was there. Still for Matty now. Cleared away by Arsenal. But Barcelona are relentless in these opening minutes. You can see how Arsenal set up you know, like a 4 5 1 out of possession, sitting deep denying space and behind, but they have to stop that cross on this right hand side. They did double up, but then just couldn't stop the cross coming into the box. It's so important they do that. movement Barcelona their positions move around the pitch so well they make the opponents move <laughs> lovely ball forward to Oshuala Deas tries to just dink that ball over Arsenal did well to try and get that away still not cleared fully yeah, a little nervous from Arsenal you know, players that you would expect to deal with the ball panicking a little bit as the ball comes into the box defensive wise they're going to do a lot tonight so they have to make sure they settle quickly Torrejon back to Paredes Nogocevic Barcelona looking the more comfortable side in these opening couple of minutes Mati. We're looking for the pass on to Puteas. Now is a chance for Arsenal to break. There's a lot of space here for McCabe. Looking for Beth Mead. Couldn't quite get a foot on it. That's a great example of the way that the pattern of play is of this game is going to go. Arsenal sitting deep. And then when they do win it back, that transition has to be quick and it has to be into areas that they've obviously identified, which is both wings, and that's a good example there. It could have actually run through to Beth Mead then as well. Maria Leon, also known as Mappy. A couple of nicknames for the uh, Spanish players already, isn't there, Lucy? It's hard enough to learn all players names and they have the different one on the back of their shirts but all these players are famous in their own right and also players just making sure they get tight to Puteas who's obviously one of the many danger players there's Perez now Puteas Finds Kiharo. Graham Hansen making that run forward. Decide to go back to Bonmati. Barcelona just looking for those spaces to open up again. Graham Hansen, lovely touch into the box. Here's a chance for Barcelona straight away. What an opportunity. Mariona Caldente took a shot, went wide. But they were looking dangerous, Barcelona. Yeah, down this right-hand side, I think it's so important for, for Arsenal to get closer. As soon as the ball's travelling there, Steph Catley has to get closer to Karen Graham Hansen. It's a great effort. And everything attacking-wise that Barcelona does comes from Caldente's movement. She's playing left, but she just wanders. Zinsberger got a touch to it, had to get her fingers tipped to it. Here's a corner for Barcelona. Swings it in. Couldn't quite get any power to that header. Torrejon. And Arsenal can breathe a sigh of relief for now. Little. Trying to get away from... His blue and red striped shirts. Here comes Bukdeas, tries to take a shot. Blocked away, though, by Williamson. Still not cleared. It looks like Arsenal really struggling, stru struggling, Lucy, to get out of their own half. Yeah, it's it's about minimising the mistakes on the ball and, and not dwelling too and taking too many touches. And 
If they can minimise that, then they reduce the amount of chances that Barcelona have. But at the moment, they've just not got quite into the rhythm of the game. And obviously, Barcelona start with a rhythm and will continue that same rhythm all the way through. Paredes. It was Vivian Miedemark just coming up behind it. They will, of course, have to try and stop Vivian Miedemar from getting those goals past them, Barcelona. She's been on hot form for quite a few years now. Here's another opportunity for Barcelona. Graham Hansen. Still Graham Hansen just rolling that ball away, trying to get away. Takes a shot and turns as well. Dorejon sends it into the box. Header comes in. Oshwala was going for it, as was Graham Hansen. But in the end, Zinsberger got her hands to it. Also trying to keep it play in front as much as possible. But they're just allowing the ball into the box far too easy, actually dealing quite well with it in the end. And he has a game plan for his team. And he talks about starting 11 and finishing 11, and he'll have plans on that. But his main focus now is just to keep this Barcelona team at arm's length. Oshuala was offside. Jambiti put a hand up quite early, saw that quite quickly. The referee did. Give that one to Arsenal. Quite nice to see the flag going up relatively early. Sometimes you see them being quite delayed. Yeah, it's annoying as a, a player, you've got to do a lot of running before the flag comes up. And this is a bit dangerous from Zinsberger. Arsenal dealt with it well, though. I'm not sure Jonas Sidevaldi, Arsenal manager, would have liked to see her come that far out of her goal. Here comes Asasat Oshuala, takes a chance at a shot. What an opportunity again for Barcelona. She's ruthless when she gets the opportunities. Asasat Oshuala, this time, just wasn't quite on target. Yeah, she, she makes those runs in between centre-backs. Quite happy to make those runs because she knows that she's going to get the ball from one of the midfielders. That's the first time really Arsenal was, have been caught out of shape up the pitch and that's where Barcelona will be the most dangerous. There's Little. Back to Zinsberger. It's better from Arsenal. It's important that they get touches on the ball, be brave, want to get on the ball and pass it. Get a bit of rhythm going themselves. Little again. As well there to get through. Ball into space. Flag is up though. That's the space. No, I mean, you, you see how high a line Barcelona will play even when they lose the ball there. They're still playing, they're still trying to play offside at a higher line. So you get that ball right and you get the run right, and that could be a way of Arsenal getting through this Barcelona defence. One of the first touches for Sandra Banos, who was awarded the Champions League goalkeeper of the year just ahead of this game. Obviously, that was for last season. A little award ceremony ahead of this match for the four players in Barcelona side. Just shows the strength that they do have in the squad. Here's an opportunity again. Well blocked though this time by Arsenal. Caldente was coming in. She's the problem, Caldente. She just drifts and roams just behind Oshuala. And then she just knows her midfield teammates are just going to play her in when she makes that dart forward. And it's so difficult for defenders that have to pass her along, but you've got to be so aware and make good decisions. Graham Hansen to Bonmati. With a powerful pass there to her teammate, Maria Leon. Miedemar blocked it. I'm sure she knew where the ball was going to be landing, though. Oh, 
Arsenal just struggling to clear the ball out to stop this threat coming in from Barcelona. Here's Graham Hansen again. Look for opportunity. Would that be it? Corner for Barcelona again. Play again from Barcelona. They have one and two touches, but again, they defended it well. Arsenal, they are going to be at full tilt quite a lot during this game, defending. Barcelona also have a huge bench to pick from too. And Graham Hansen decides to take this short. Leon sends it into the box. Still not cleared though. Here's a chance for Barcelona punched away in the end by Zinsberger. And Arsenal will have to reset. Yeah, they're quite creative with the corners, Barcelona. And Torrejon just had anticipated that that was going to drop from a header. And Zinsberger has been, it's been all Barcelona, hasn't it? She's been the Busy goalkeeper. Well, here comes Graham Hansen again. Lead away. Gorchevich trying to go for the big shot there. And Gorchevich again into the box. This will be an easy one for Zinsberger to pick up. That's right, Zinsberg is just calming her team down and they've got through the first 14 minutes. They knew that this was the start that Barcelona would make, but they just have to, I would say, have a look at getting out quickly to try and stop the cross into the box. I know they want to stay compact centrally and also in terms of an outlet, there has to be an outlet when they win the ball back, otherwise they will just be under pressure the whole game. Barcelona have got a fantastic home record. They've won their last 46 matches here. The last defeat came in February of 2019. With everything that's been going on, Lucy, seems like almost a lifetime ago, <laughs> yeah. doesn't it? Absolutely it does, but you can understand that, the way that they play. That they're going to be very proud of their home record. It's a foul. And bon Mati. Barcelona just taking their time. Yeah, they're not going to jump out and press Arsenal. They're just going to sit like that and have Barca pass through them if they have to. Graham Hansen sends it into the box, into the feet, though, of BT. The foul on Marnham. And then Arsenal, look at Arsenal cut a few passes together and Barcelona will then hunt in packs in the initial first few seconds of losing possession. They'll hunt and there uh, that referee deems it free kick. And so the Barca manager there, Jonathan Giraldez, became the boss after Luis Cortes' decision to step down from his role this season. He was the assistant manager few seasons so he knows this Barca team inside and out it's been an opportunity there for Arsenal saw Kim Little just driving forward looks across the rest of the players as well to see if there was any support long ball over for Oshuala Deas is hanging on the edge of the box. This is tough for Arsenal because both attacking players and defending players have to be nearly perfect, particularly the attackers if they're going to get anything from the game. Arsenal, when it does get up there, it has to stick. The passes have to find teammates, but it's easier said than done, particularly the way Barcelona defend as well. We'll still have the confidence in this side, though, because we've had an absolutely fantastic start to their Women's Super League season so far. 
course, they beat favourites Chelsea as well in the first game of the season. And that'll surely give them the confidence to know they can go up against the best teams in the world and be up there with the best teams in the world. And they look like an outfit, don't they, Lucy? That are going to go all the way in the Women's Super League, in the domestic, in the domestic cups as well, and maybe even in the Champions League. Yeah, they, they've started the WSL really, really well. They're scoring goals, they're beating teams around them. That great win against Chelsea in the first game. And that just to, and they'd already played some Champions League games. And that just allowed them to be a little bit sharper, I think, than Chelsea. And obviously the win against Manchester City, so they'll be buoyant. But they know this is a different proposition coming away to Barcelona, the, just the way Barcelona play and keep possession. Arsenal will be happy for Barca to have that possession. Well, thought play was going to be stopped there. It is in the end because Warnham's shoe came off while she was playing. Not much you can do about that, is there? Would have been a bit unfair, wouldn't it, yeah. if Barcelona had carried on? But you, they, they, there's no real need because the referee hadn't stopped the play for, for them to stop play. And fair play to uh, Barcelona. That was interesting hearing the thoughts of the Arsenal boss. Did say his side need to be the best version of themselves. Will make mistakes, Barcelona, he said, and so will they, but they have to work on them. They have to take advantage. At the moment, this Barcelona side doesn't seem to be making any mistakes. That's interesting. For some reason, Arsenal didn't give it back, which you can hear the fans and the players who fully expect, and they should have done really. You know, Barcelona didn't have to kick it out in the first place for Marnham. They don't want to work. Uh, Annoy this Barcelona team any more than you need to. <laughs> Don't want to light the fire within. Well, they come Arsenal. They're asking for offside, Barcelona, they're getting it. That's better from Arsenal again, but again, just hold the run. Miedemar has got and the quality it's a high line so they'll always try and play that offside and they take risks Barcelona take risks all over the pitch and in particular you know they prefer attacking than defending so they, they play that high line but if Arsenal can get one of those right here's Graham Hansen for Barcelona lovely little bit of trickery to get him in Beatty sent it away Yaro into the box. Yeah, Williamson came jumping in front of Zinsberger. You hear the applause around the stadium here at the Johan Cruyff Stadium. The fans, I'm sure, will be pleased to see their side in Champions League action again. The reigning champions. Nice bit of play now from Barcelona. Sinigocevic trying to get in around him little. Out for an Arsenal throw. Just need to increase the pace of the passing Arsenal when they do win it back. We talked about again being, being brave and getting themselves on the ball. They have enough ball players in this team. Like I'd have all said. They've got to be the best version of themselves and quite a lot of Barcelona players having off an off night because when they are in full rhythm, particularly at home, they're very, very difficult to beat. Just a word from the referee there to pull that back. Going to take as many steps as they can, Arsenal. be an even tougher night for Arsenal coming here with the support of the fans in Barcelona of course there are a very small amount of Arsenal fans that have been able to go as well but 
This is the first of two legs, of course, two home and away match being played in this new group stage format for the Women's Champions League. Griffon into Graham Hansen. Good ball into the box, but away by Arsenal. Not cleared yet. Here's a chance. And blocked. They've had some work to do, Arsenal, in their defence. It's a good block by Jen Beatty and Vihara again. She works in the edge of that area and, and the second ball. She's first to pounce. What do you think he'll be thinking in these opening 20 minutes or so, Lucy? Well, I think for a lot of it, he'll be he'll be quite happy. It's nil-nil. He knew that Barcelona would have a lot of the ball and, and chances. And he's just got to trust that his team make right decisions. And I just think some of the decisions in the in the attacking where they've have had the ball have not quite been up to scratch. Sinigorcevic to Leon into the feet of Puteas just misses out on Bomati. Graham Hansen will pick it up though. She's not really having too much trouble trying to get in and around the Arsenal players, and this will be a free kick right on the edge of the box and a fantastic position for Barcelona. I was thinking that Arsenal need to just use some of the physicality that, that they have in the WSL on this Barcelona team, but you just you've got to choose the right moments to do that. And now you've, you've given them a free kick right on the edge of the box. Kitty McCabe is one of them who can use her physicality. Just put players under pressure, but it's the, it's the right moments and positions. Barcelona have had 71 over 71% possession in the opening 15 minutes of this game. They have looked the more threatening. And now it's a free kick in a very dangerous area. Looks like Alexia Pudeas will take a shot. Pudeas in, but headed away. And he'll be out for a corner to Barcelona. Looked like it just come off the head of Miedemar. Position on the wall by Zinsberger. Stood up to the task. We'll take it quickly, Barcelona. Graham Hansen gets around. Ball still alive. Mia Leon. Niedemar was in the way, though. Arnhem able to clear it this time. Arsenal will try and create some space. So Manon plays more defensively as a midfielder for, for Arsenal, but she, in her career, she can get forward and she found herself right up the pitch then. And that's the moments where you've got to make those better decisions. They have got bodies up there, Arsenal. It's not happened much, it's not going to happen much in this game, so have to make those count. Griffon. You can see the percentage stats there. A little bit more into uh, given to Arsenal there, but still 69% for Barcelona. Just over 26 minutes gone. Graham Hansen just weaving away in between that Arsenal defence. Arnhem just tries to get that ball away from Torrejon. In the end, it does go in Arsenal's favour, but she's not pleased with that decision. It's better from Arsenal. Determined and Beth Mead, I'm not sure that that was as much as a free kick as a fall on the floor suggests, but just been a little bit cute and clever. She just caught it. I don't know why she's moaning, because, because she got a piece of Beth Mead there. Do 
looks like she might have got a little bit of a word of warning from the referee. Here's Zinsberger. He's had a busy night so far. Didn't quite get that ball where she wanted. Graham Hansen again into the path for Bonmati to pick up. She's probably one of the best in the world. Hansen put one on ones with defenders, so the last thing you want to do is just let her and retreat back into your own box. And you've got to be really thorough. It's well defended in the end by Catley. been opting for these short corners. Barcelona. This time, Leon sends it long. Header comes in. Straight into the hands of Zinsberger. Well, they would normally play the straight ball in from a corner just because of the physical height that of Jim Beat it, Williamson have Catley. Matty again sends that ball into the box, just skimmed past Mariona Caldente. Quite a few of these chances just from Arsenal, just losing concentration setting up to play out from the back and then just losing it on the second pass out and just allows Barcelona to found even more pressure on that back line of Arsenal. That was a pretty difficult ball from Zinsberger to try and control. Maybe a little bit of nerve still from the Arsenal goalkeeper. The referee just having a word with Ethan Cave. I think just just had a kick out of the ball. I mean, I think it was worth that from the, the referee from the cave, but that's that's not need a little bit more of that devilment. Bit of passing from Barcelona. Shuala Diaz. Here's Oshuala again, takes a shot, punched away. Now on the follow up, surely. The first goal goes to Barcelona. Mariona Caldente opens the scoring, and you've got to say it was coming. They were threatening, they were pushing. And finally, on the half an hour mark, Barcelona have found the opening goal. Yeah, well, they've had the most possession, the most shots. I think Arsenal have had one shot, but and that was just about who reacted first. And they quickened up the way that they were passing. And even then, Arsenal could just, as the ball comes in, you have to be first to it, first to react, and then first to react to the ball when it comes off the goalkeeper. Zinsberg is not any chance with that. That soccer ball that comes out, you have to be the first as a defender to get on the end of it. And also have actually defended quite well. One lapse in concentration and not following in. Mariona Caldente is not going to miss from there. Well, she makes no mistake. And the home side have the lead. Barcelona, can they retain that title that they won just a few months ago? Sunogodjevic is not a defender, you know, she, she's an attacking fullback when she does play there, but that's the first time Beth Mead's got, got at it in that left-back position. The set pieces be interesting here because Arsenal have the height and power, good delivery. 
And there would be the perfect opportunity to try and find that response from Barcelona's opening goal. Peyton Negev just making sure her side are in the position she wants them to be. Free kick swings in. Out of the way. Still not cleared though by Barcelona and Arsenal have still got the opportunity alive. That free kick was aiming towards Jen Beatty then, and just as the ball came in, she got a little nudge in the back. As a centre back, she's not going to go down, but that was definitely a nudge. Valti. As Valti again gets that ball taken off from Bonmati. This is real dangerous for Barcelona. Bonmati takes a shot into the hands of Zinsberger. Those three midfielders. Calden just come alive when they win back possession transition they're so dangerous it's such a regimented team and as I said before the game it's a regimented structured team this Barcelona team but they actually make it look fluid just wrestling the ball in the end BT's able to Ball on the other side. <laughs> Foul on the Barcelona captain Buteas from Beth Mead. <laughs> Seems pretty surprised that that won't be pulled up, yeah. pulled up by the referee. I'm not sure that in the WSL that would have been a, a, a foul, but Beth Mead was. Bounced off the ball herself just before, prior to that. I don't think she got a touch on the ball, did she? No. Teas quite happy to take that as a free kick, but I just think that sort of bite is, has been missing a little bit from, from Arsenal. They, they're concentrating on the position out of possession and the way that they're trying to squeeze the lines and not allow Barcelona to play, but you've still got to engage and I'm sure you try and win the ball back as best you can. Well, they've won the ball back. Miedemar just tries to go around. There's so many Barcelona players come back to help, though. They'll be out for a Barca throw. You've got to say, though, Lucy, Arsenal don't seem too afraid to put people, players forward and try and go for that time. But it's just to get around those Barcelona players who really, as you said, hunt in packs, don't they? Yeah, I mean, it, they hunt in packs initially for the first few sessions, seconds. And if they can't win it back, then they will drop. But usually they do win it back. And they just know they work on overloads. That's the way that they play. Through ball to Oshuala. Lucy's there, took a shot, but into the side netting. For Oshuala, and just a lapse of concentration perhaps for Arsenal. And Oshuala was through. And again, a willing runner, Oshuala. But I think Leah Williamson just did enough just to guide her slightly wide. It had to be a good effort there to beat Zinsberger, but always Oshuala, a, a willing runner. And she knows that she's going to get those passes into the channels. Well, there you can see your stats, Lucy. 16 attempts for Barcelona. No attempts yet for Arsenal. Here's another opportunity. And BT was in the way. Williamson. Nice to clear that ball upfield. Uh, setting up and playing out from the back house and the first couple of passes are, are, are good and then the third one it, the way that Barcelona are set up to press it they just win the ball back so I have to make sure that that is better and terrific both in and out of possession Barcelona
Dias. Yes, Paredes. Now Torrejon. Arsenal able to intercept. BT through the middle of the field. Was looking for Miedemar. Hansen was looking for Oshwala and she got the ball there. Torrejon into the box. I'll go to Barcelona. Sorry, it went, when Barcelona play the ball quickly, one and two touch, it's absolutely devastating. They just know exactly where each other are going to be, even. they just turn the tempo right up. I just thought that that was a kick, but again, a creative corner, as we usually see from Barca. And Hansen sends his ball into the box. Not clear, Doshwala was there. And Lillian sends it in. Just looks like it. A little bit of a painful touch there. She tried to clear it. Referee will have to try and stop, will stop the game there. Went down immediately, wasn't she, after she touched the ball? It twisted her ankle. And he will desperately want to get to half time with there just been a one goal deficit and he'll be pleased with certain aspects of his of his team in the first half and needs them to show a little bit more oh, you just see that incident again just bent twisted her ankle i think valti it's been quite a whack onto the top of the foot he's back up on her feet though leo valti we're in a bit of words with the fourth official Jonas Edeval I think that's telling him to stay into his coaching area, stay in his box, I'm sure it must be quite a nerve-wracking game for him, especially seeing as it's only a goal down and Arsenal they do have the firepower up front to get those goals against Barcelona Pitch is opening up a little bit more now for Arsenal. Beth Mead. Just trying to shrug a couple of the Barca players off and does draw in that foul. She was asking for it from Sinigorcevic. She's a willing runner, Beth Mead just showed she's really on form this season, obviously. The WSL game, see a lot more attacking from Arsenal. It's not as much defending, but she just see that those moments of quality. She let the ball run past her. Great feet back. Dente there. Steph Catley not quite able to put that ball into the right space for Marnham. And just look now on how many bodies Arsenal have got forward. They've just got to commit. They are going to do it and hunt and try and press, but Barcelona are quite happy to pass, pass the press like that. Well, the Barcelona threat starts building again. This time, Arsenal able to deal with it. Catley. The Arsenal goalkeeper just put under a bit more pressure again. Be a real game for Zinsberger to be at her absolute best. Speaking of Barcelona, have had seven shots on target, I think it's 17 altogether. Here's Oshuala. Arsenal were asking for the offside flag, but she keeps on going. There's the second. <laughs> Alexia Pedeas just slots it home for Barcelona. 
to double their lead. And all of the work came from Asisat Oshuala. Arsenal were asking for the offside flag. But in the end, Alexia Puteas able to double the home side's lead. Not sure. It'd be interesting whether that was offside. It's a great run by Oshuala. Always a play, and it's usually Puteas, and she's so cool and calm when the ball arrives at her feet. And Barcelona have just been completely dominant in terms of possession and chances in this first half. And it's like they just strangle teams. They're quite patient with it. They're quite happy to score the goals whenever the opportunities arrive. But they arrive that they uh, strangle teams with their possession. It's incredible to watch. Well, it will have been the start that was asked for from the Barca manager. And Arsenal find a route back into this game. I think even Miedemar knew she was offside, didn't really go forward that fast. Oh, she's a player. Teas has a lot of players on this Barcelona team that you could say that about. He knew how big this task was to come here and get a result. Like I say, I've been pleased with some aspects, but you know that this Barcelona, I don't think there's another team like them in the world. Barcelona's eight attempts on target to Arsenal's zero. Fans will be enjoying it, won't they? Bit of a party atmosphere at the Owen Cove Stadium. It's a joy to watch this team week in, week out. And you can get back in the stadiums. I mean, some of the results that they've had 9 1 in their last game, 8 0, another 8 0 before that. The goals flying in this Barca women's side. Hon sends it in. Oh, wanted to go for the spectacular there. Oshuala didn't quite work out, but my word, what a goal that would have been. I feel confident enough, Oshuala, within this team structure that she can attempt that. Uh, and it's, it's actually soul destroying for a team as, as good as Arsenal. They've huffed and puffed throughout this first half and been completely dominated. You've got to be 100% perfect, which is absolutely impossible as a team against Barcelona. Just make sure that any mistakes that you make are not punished and not quite happened for Arsenal. Just the one minute time added on in this first half, almost played that one minute. Takes a look at a watch. It would have been the perfect half for Barcelona. Arsenal had to really dig deep. And there goes the half time whistle. Barcelona taking the lead as it stands with two goals. The first goal coming from Mariona Caldente, and the second one. Well worked goal. Now the captain Alexia Puteas. And the assist came from Asasat Oshuala. Lucy, your thoughts on that half time? Yeah. But... yeah. I mean it's we expected Barcelona to, to sort of keep the possession. They know that they toy with teams. We knew that Arsenal would have to be as good as they could possibly be. And it's just been a dominant performance from Barcelona. But Arsenal have had chances to get themselves in the final third and they've just not taken them. Well, the Arsenal backroom staff and the manager, Jonas Edeval, still sat out on the pitch, just trying to work out what they can do in that second half. Barcelona have been ruthless. The fans 
will have really enjoyed what they've been seeing so far in the first half. They'll want to see a lot more of that in the second half, I'm sure. The reigning champion so far absolutely blowing Arsenal away. Arsenal not being able to get any chances so far in that first half. Perhaps in the second half, they change things around. Might be able to get more opportunities. They've got the likes of Vivian Miedemar at their disposal. Got some great goal scorers on their field, but do you think they need to make any changes, Lucy, at half time? Well, it'd be interesting because they, they, they've had three or four chances and been caught offside a couple of times, which means that they are getting in those positions, so they've got to make better decisions. So maybe, you know, you look at you, Iwabuchi, will be the obvious one in her link up play with Miedema, but it's got to be the balance between not conceding anymore and trying to get themselves in this game. Well, it was the half that Barcelona would have wanted, not the half that Arsenal wanted at half time. It's Barcelona 2, Arsenal 0. When I was growing up and there were certain periods where I like, maybe didn't feel like I fitted in, the more I discovered London, the more I realised that there was a place for me. The further I went into the city, the more accepted I felt. There's a lot of communities and pockets of London that embrace the game in their own way. So yeah, it makes me pretty proud to be a Londoner. I'm Lucy Monkman, I'm from South London and I play for Dulwich Hamlet FC. So before Dulwich Hamlet Women, we were a team called AFC Phoenix. Very, very much a grassroots football club. We won a couple of leagues, won a couple of cups. And we were kind of like, you know what? We feel like this team and this club should have better backing than it does. Parallel to this, Dulwich had just won their stadium back. And so we approached them and we were like, are you guys looking for a women's team? And just by chance, they were. And they were like, it's a real shame that we don't have a women's team. The club is over 120 years old, we really should. It's a complete change. And we were used to playing on like Clapham Common in front of like a couple of dogs and maybe someone's partner. I've been in goal a couple of times. We used to have mismatch kit. And we just like really just scraped by, so here now it's like seeing the evolution of the club is just absolutely insane my name is katie hoy i'm originally from canada but live in hackney and i am a football coach i set up hackney laces because so many girls that lived uh, on the estate behind my house in hackney would come up to me and say hey do you know anywhere i could play my club didn't have a girl set up so after this happened more and more and more, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll just, I'll set up a club. We set up on a patch in Hackney, and then two girls turned into six, and then six turned into 20. From that little patch in Hackney 10 years ago, we are now four clubs. We have more than 1,000 girls and women 
playing within our clubs. We deliberately act as a franchise because that support networking community is just so important to help us navigate barriers, but also collectively advocate for change. I'm JJ and I'm from Northwest London. I'm a football referee and a football coach. Well, I support I'm a referee, do you mind? <laughs> When I first started refereeing, it was something that I kind of fell into by accident. And slowly, slowly, I started to understand it, started to like it. And next thing you know, I wanted to be a professional referee. I look up to Sean Messi because she has done the unthinkable, like she's literally reached the top. She's the only female referee in the Premier League and she's broken a lot of barriers like she is a trailblazer I look up to her and I wish one day I reach her levels my name is Vic Akers and I'm from the borough of Islington I was uh, at Arsenal for roughly 35 years when I first came to Arsenal we developed a, a ladies side we, we managed to carry on through for a few years that uh, we were pure amateurs. In fact, the girls actually paid to play at that point. There was amazing sort of camaraderie with the women's football. I thought if we could get underway and, and get a good side together, um, it would change the game. And I think it did. My name's Anna Patton. I'm from North London. I support Arsenal and I also play for Arsenal. Having more eyes on the game, it really just raises the platform for us. I think it does make it more challenging. There's going to be more scrutiny, but I think that's also a great challenge to rise to. I think it's amazing that there's going to be so many more of those top quality standard games out there for fans and maybe people who weren't fans before to be able to come watch these games and then see the quality that women footballers do have. My name's Katie Chapman. I'm from Bermondsey, South East London, and I support Millwall. Planning the Champions League for me was, was unreal. That was my first year at Arsenal in, in 2007, my first season, and to win the quadruple there that year and be one of the first English teams to win, yeah. The Champions League was something special. And I remember um, at the end of the game in the final, obviously having the medal around my neck and I had my son sitting on my shoulders, which was, yeah, a moment I'll never forget. Having children, especially boys, um, for them it's normal. I think they've lived in my career and they've lived in my life. You know, they've become, they get on the coach of all the girls to away games and they've come to World Cups and European Championships. And going and watching them and watch them train, they play and train with girls, which is great. You know, you see them all mixed. Girls playing football is normal to them, and, and for me, being their mum, I'm really proud of that. My name is Felicia Pennant. I'm from Clapham Junction in South West London. I'm the founder and editor-in-chief of Season Zine. What makes football in London special to me is just the creativity in the scene and the fact that football intersects with so many different parts of culture off the pitch. What drove me to make Season Zine? There are a couple of different reasons. The first reason was just being obsessed with football. I guess being obsessed with fashion too and working in that space and meeting really brilliant creative people um, that were also into football. And there being just this kind of overarching stereotype of what a female football fan is. Women don't just like women's football, they like men's football too. And it, to be honest, you take out the gender Women like football. My name is Sadiq Khan. I'm from South London and I'm the Mayor of London. I think it's really important that we encourage uh, big sponsors, uh, those involved in business, to recognise the potential of women's football. I'm a firm believer in if you can't see it, you can't be it. One of the great things about women's football is the role models we have from London. I am really excited about the future of women's football in our city. Hey, are you watching? I am powerful. 
I am strong. I am able to be exactly who I am on any given day. And I'm able to stand in my truth no matter what. Now watch us move. Welcome back then, almost ready for the second half here as Barcelona lead Arsenal by two goals to nil. The first goal coming on the half hour mark from Mariona Galdente. And then they doubled their lead thanks to an assist by Asatoshuala, who perfectly placed it into the pathway of the Barcelona captain, Alexia Pideas, who was able to slot it home. Beside me is Lucy Warden. Just talking about that first half, Lucy. It'll be interesting to see how Arsenal can try and change their game plan, especially when you see some of the chances that have been coming in. And this great goal from Mariona Caldente, who just took advantage of that defence against Arsenal. Yeah, they're so bright. Barcelona in the, the way that they create the chances, the way that they move. There's always a midfield runner. Arsenal back four just simply have five or six runners to contend with and it's so difficult to deal with. I mean, it's so difficult to play against this Barcelona team full stop. So, you know, it's not that Arsenal are playing badly, it's just the dominance of, of, of how they play and that every single one of them knows their roles. Well, they do have a strong bench. There is Nikita Paris, Jordan Nobbs as well, also available. Mane Iwabuchi too. It's one that you mentioned, Lucy could be another option for Arsenal to come onto the pitch. He also, of course, recently signed USA star Tobin Heath too, who most recently was applying her trade in the Women's Super League with Manchester United. Got a, quite a few goals to her name there as well. Only recently made her debut for the Gunners. It is Barcelona that lead the way here in the first half and they really really stuck to their game plan didn't let Arsenal have many chances there is another really key player for them Jenny Hermoso who hasn't played yet this season with an ankle injury but she's back in the squad I'm sure a lot of these Barcelona fans that have come to watch will be hoping to see her make an appearance on the pitch this evening and you see as well Caldente and Liga Martins played I think in the Champions League semi-final and final but you just her movement causes so many problems. Her and Oshwala just pop up in places where it's so difficult to defend against. And, and all this with the movement of the, the rest of the team, in particular the midfielders. And when, when Arsenal do win it back, they have to do something with it quickly, but then they get absolutely suffocated by the Barcelona players who will press and counter press and try and win the ball wherever they give it away. Well, the players are making their way back out onto the pitch for this second half. Arsenal will be hoping they can find a response to those two first half goals from Barcelona. Captain Kim Little, I'm sure would have had some words to say at half time. They've had a blistering start to their Women's Super League season like to keep that good run going as well in the Champions League of course this is now the new inaugural group stage matches that we are seeing this is the first day of them and a couple of games already for the earlier kickoffs but each side will of course play their group opponents home and away so Barcelona still yet to come to Arsenal as well and then of course they'll have the difficult job 
playing against the Arsenal fans as well around the stadium. Problem that Arsenal have got to deal with now. They've come out in force, haven't they, Lucy, the Barcelona fans? And they've been cheering and clapping this Barcelona team all throughout the first half. Yeah, listen, these fans are absolutely spoiled. The football that they get to see every single week is absolutely incredible. There will be the top two teams from each pool that qualify through to the next round. And we are underway in the second half. It really stands Barcelona 2, Arsenal 0. Arsenal will be looking for an immediate response to those two goals that went against them in the first half. And immediately they've got themselves a free kick and Parades has got herself a yellow card. Yeah, I think it, as far as Arsenal are concerned, it is about being clever when they do get the ball up there, drawing those free kicks, using set pieces. And, you know, I talked to before about not making any mistakes, it's so difficult. But when you're up there, Keita McCabe there just drew the foul from Paredes and now you've got to use it well and have one thought of if you do lose the ball, what's going to happen when Barcelona do get it? Well, let's see what happens. The free kick comes in, rolls straight into the hands of Sandra Banos. Not really had to see too much of in that first half. Well done, Tate. Here comes Asasad Oshuala. She's going to go one on one. There's the third for Barcelona. It just looked too easy. Within minutes of the second half beginning, Asisat Oshuala causes more pain for Arsenal, and they've got their third goal. You know, I look at Oshuala and her dynamic and the runs that she makes, and Jen Beattie made the decision to step up. And as soon as she did that, she was on the back foot and she was never going to gain that in terms of the pace of Oshwala and then she finishes and she's really improved the game Oshwala the last few years which have seen her in English football that sort of finishing is absolutely top class and she is a complete centre forward now and is the worst possible start to the second half for Arsenal but obviously the best one Barcelona Barcelona 3-0 up against Arsenal Me just holding a shoulder went down slightly. Seems to be okay. Back up on her feet. It will be an Arsenal throw. And that goal from Asisat Oshuala. And, her, and the captain Alexia Putelas Buteas. Now joint top goal scorers in the season. That's the thing, and he knows if you stop the dynamism of Oshwala and Caldente, then you've still got to deal with the midfield runners. You've still got to deal with Mateas, who will just arrive in the right moment at the right time. It's such a difficult proposition to deal with this Barcelona team. And of course, you're running after the ball, you don't have the ball, so you're working harder when you've not got the ball. And obviously confidence as well, 3-0 down. Right at the start of the second half, Arsenal just got to keep going. This group is not going to be decided with this this particular head-to-head, -head, but it will definitely give Arsenal a, an idea of where they are in world football. Here's Mariona Caldente. We've got the opening goal for Barcelona. Tries to put it in the pathway for Sivocevic. It's quite a big foot here. Here's another opportunity for Barcelona. Good save there from Zinsberger. Opportunity still alive, though. But in the end, Kim Little able to intercept. Thought play might have been stopped. Bit of a high foot that we saw going in there. Play 
carried on. A little bit of frustration there from Beth Mead. Just dragged Caldente out of the way. It is difficult when you, you're a good player and you've been your team's been schooled in this way. It's so frustrating. Oshuala, she had options. Here's Graham Hansen takes a shot and goes just wide. You don't want to see this Barcelona side filled with confidence, especially when they are on such good scoring form. Graham Hansen took her opportunity. He thought that that was going to happen. Beth Mead just a little bit frustrated with Caldente and the fact that she thought that she was being obstructed by Caldente, so she dragged it. No, she, she actually was frustrated. <laughs> she was obstructed. I, cannot, I think you can blame Beth Mead for that, but she's going to accept the yellow card. Arsenal looking for a way back into this match. Both teams as well, under the guidance of new managers, albeit the Barca manager having been with the side for a good few years as the assistant coach, now taking the reins. But Arsenal, brand new manager. And new ideas as well. Here come Barcelona again. Mati will take a turn. Blocked in the end. Arsenal are, uh, so again, sorry, Arsenal are playing the front three quite narrow, and it just means that the wide areas are completely dominated by Barcelona. But Barcelona play with the two centre backs and then everybody else forward, including the two two full backs. We saw a couple of the some players warming up there. Tobin Heath, Nikita Paris, Caitlin Ford. All available if needed. Neither side making any changes yet. No, I, I think for Arsenal it's, the, it's the, the balance. If they put too many forward thinking players on, it just needs to be a little bit different. I think that's what I talked about Iwabuchi. But they need to make sure they defend those wide areas a little bit better. You get, I know what they're trying to do, they're trying to be compact. Is Valti draws in the foul? Williamson Arsenal now, the ones that are taking their time. Kick there from Zinsberger. Do you see any changes, Lucy, so far in Arsenal's play from the first half? Not particularly. I think that the conceding straight after half time was a real hammer blow, really. They will have come out. They've had a good pep talk by the manager, and then to concede quickly. It's just like the game's completely away from them now, even if it wasn't before at 2-0. So I think perhaps we'll see some changes in the in the next few minutes. Might have out. But it's still making sure that you make right decisions and execute them properly when they do get the ball, and that again hasn't happened in the second half. That's me chasing onto that ball. Well left in the end by Maria Leon. Well, three changes it looks like, Lucy. Yeah, there's a chance that the front three will be changed here for Arsenal. Just to see whether when they do get it, there's an effort there. She finds herself quite a lot of the time up. Oh. Here's Beth Mead, Vivian Miedemar. It was a soft attempt at goal really and easily dealt with by Sandra Banos. It was an opportunity for Arsenal. Yeah, and you see Miedema putting those past the goalkeeper but she's done a lot of work, a lot of defensive work and 
able to, then to be fresh when the ball comes through is a, is a real tall order. There's Arsenal again. Beth Mead will try and take the long shot. Slipped on away though, doing it. On a couple of occasions now, Barcelona have just given a little bit of encouragement in the defensive third to, to Arsenal, but still not managed to see Miedema, you would expect there to just get a little bit more power behind it. Well, here are the changes. Beth Mead comes off. Tobin Heath on. USA International. Women's World Cup winner as well. Nikita Paris, who's also won the Women's Champions League with Lyon. She's having a little bit of a struggle with the board, actually, before she's able to make her way onto the pitch. It was Beth Mead that came off for Tobin Heath. Vivian Miedemar as well. And McCabe, so a complete change to that front three. And where do you see these lining up, Lucy? Yeah, I mean, that, that was the, the, the front three of, of worked hard, mostly in defence, but had higher expectations when they did get the, the ball. But it's so difficult, you, you know, you're talking about the best team in the world that they're playing against and who will press you and counter press you as far up the pitch as they can, so it has been difficult, particularly for the forwards. So I think this is just to try and give it a lease of life to any sort of possession that Arsenal have in the final third. Ford instantly putting that pressure on. Banyos. Barcelona just able to pick their way out with any sort of Arsenal threat. Here's Graham Hansen pushing forward. She's got options in the box. Graham Hansen takes a shot in the end, blocked by the legs of Sinsberger. Ball still alive though. And it away. And Moritz not quite cleared though. It looks like Barcelona have an opportunity to shoot. And block this time. Some tired minds and legs for Arsenal there. And again, so terrific 1v1, number seven for Barcelona at that right-hand side, and she runs at you in the penalty area. Your challenge has got to be good. They end up just delaying and delaying and going deeper and deeper, and that gets her a chance in front of goal. Harris. Interesting then, though, being the Arsenal had players up the pitch trying to press Barcelona, but every single one of their players, wherever they play on the pitch, are comfortable with the ball in tight areas in possession. So they just bang, bang, bang and play past the press just so easily. And that is why it's so difficult to, to press them out of possession. There well, they come again, Barcelona. Dea sends that ball into the box for Graham Hansen. Tight angle this time, though. Zinsberger was there once again, but she's been making the threats for Barcelona. And Graham Hansen wants to be on the end of one of these, and it's good movement again. Possession taken away again by Barcelona. Not looking to slow down at all, are they? The home side. They want to make the mark in this group stage. They know that Arsenal are considered to be a very good team. Deus just dinks that ball over, looking for Bon Mati. Williamson was trying to hold off Bon Mati, but in the end, it goes in the way of the Spanish side. And just dragged out wide is not really where she wants to be. Defend the set piece now. Williamson recently put on the captain's armband. Ringling women. Short free kick in the end. Barcelona ball swooped into the box. 
headed away and out for a goal kick. It's going to be a long, long 30 minutes for Arsenal. Done a lot of work out of possession. And again, another attack, just allowing Graham to Hansen to get into the box. Can't they try to stay with him in the end. It's good goalkeeping. Loose ball here. Picked up by Marnham. Into the way of Tobin Heath. He'll take a shot, Heath. She's not afraid to do so either. Just went wide. It's better. First thing he thinks about when she does get the ball, run at a defender, create some space for herself and get a shot on target. Just wide there, but they've, those three have got to come on, get the ball when they, when they do get the ball and make their mark on the game. You've got a player as well, like Tobin Heath, who's got all those experiences as well, playing at the top level, winning so much of what you can win as a female footballer. And then to come into this side, this Arsenal side, a team that she sported, so young surely will give this side a boost as well to have someone of that experience coming in yeah, it's the winning mentality that she will bring and raise the good mentality that this arsenal team have got that she's just a level above in terms of what she's done and hansen is trying to get away from kim little does well in the end to try and swoop that ball over goes all the way but Dente to pick it up still alive, headed away by BT. I'm sure Graham Hansen will fancy herself. A shot at goal two. And Arsenal did well just to draw Barcelona back. Yeah, he'd be happy with his team, I'm sure, and the way they've approached this game. He will be looking for more goals, I'm sure. Gorchevich, it's around Paris. Here's Alexia Budeas. Now Caldente will take a shot. And just swooped over, hit the top of the net. She's been good tonight. Caldente popping up in really good areas. Confidence to have a pop from there. Barcelona still with the 24 shots, 11 on target for them. Arsenal able to get three shots, just the one on target so far. 26 attempts in total there for Barcelona. I mean, they, they dominate the Spanish league, but the Spanish league is still strong. It's just how good Barcelona are. Here's Sinigorcevic. Well defended there by Paris. Threw in the foul as well. She's brought a new energy, hasn't she, to this side? Yeah, I mean, that's it. It's whether they can get the ball up to these players, the three players who come on up front quick enough and in good areas. It did start OK when they did come on. Well, the key to Paris will, of course, know all too well about the Women's Champions League, having played in it with Lyon. She won it with Lyon, but unfortunately had to miss the final. She was suspended with a red card. There's another dangerous player, Lika Martens, Dutch national. And any player that Barcelona bring on will be a pretty big threat to Arsenal regardless. Just see the shape of, of Barcelona, the two centre backs, and then everybody else at varying degrees of vertically up the pitch, including the full backs. And then it's just the movement that just destroys teams in the passing as well. Barcelona press forward once again. Graham Hansen this time. Well, Mati will take a shot, not quite cleared away. And in the end, it is. Just allowing that run 
And Graham Hansen on that right hand side, as soon as she gets you one on one in the box, she just cannot make a challenge. And just been going direct at Steph Catley all night. How much of a statement of intent will this game be as well for the rest of the Champions League teams? Lucy looking at this Barcelona side. They won it last year. And their form is not dipping one bit. They might even be getting better and better and better. I think they are. I think that the, the team, as a team, you know, that some of the parts is just greater, isn't it? That they're all good players, but the team is, a, is massively talented as a group. Lovely ball in there from Tobin Heath to find the key to Parrish. He's looking for options. Aileen Ford was arriving. Here's Heath again. Now Marnham for Arsenal. Sends that ball in, but enough players there able to pick it up. There was positive play there from Tobin Heath. Yeah, positive and, and getting players forward, Arsenal. And when they do get players forward, it's either going to end up in the back of the net or out for a goal kick just so that you don't suffer the transition from Barcelona but you know we talk about Leon dominating the women's game for, for years but Barcelona now will but the way that they play no women's team's ever played like this handball there from Caitlin Ford the game seems to be opening up slightly for Arsenal They're just easing off the pedal I think Barcelona, but just gives Arsenal a, a glimmer. to the middle of the park there to a captain. Medeas. One does go in the way of Arsenal in the end. Foul on Nikita Paris. And Nikita Paris is, is a threat. Gorchevich will know if she gets a one-on-one, -on -one, she has the pace. Last time that Barcelona and Arsenal met, it was Arsenal that were the better side. 7 0 on aggregate. That was quite a good few years ago now, back in 2012. Barcelona have invested in their side. Here come Arsenal, though, opportunity now. And you're not able to hold on to it. Little, and she makes something of this. Schwala came back. It's going to be another change for Arsenal. Jordan Nobbs will make way onto the pitch. Williamson. Balti just trying to be a little bit clever there. Work from the captain, Kim Little. Arsenal having a spell of possession now. Here's Heath. A little dink over just to get past those two Barcelona players. You can see the ideas are there. Kim Little seems to be the deeper of the centre midfielders now with man I'm trying to go up and beyond and just taking a few more risks. Alti to Tobin He. Just looking for that opportunity, Tobin He. On to Mana into the box, gets taken down. Arsenal looking a little bit been too easy there for Caitlin Ford to go down. 
centre from Arsenal, worked it well down that left-hand side, were patient. In the end, that's a good ball. Caitlin Ford, I think, just tried to get across the back of Leon. I think it was a foul corner. They can make use of these set pieces. Will be Tobin Heath to take this corner for Arsenal. Take it short in the end. Heath into the box. There's the opportunity for BT. I'm just trying to isolate Jen BT there against one of the small Barcelona defenders. Malia Valti is the player to make way for Jordan Nobbs. Here comes Nika Martins. Asisat Oshuala got herself an assist, got herself a goal. A pretty good evening for her. As the applause rings round the Johan Cruyff Stadium, you can see here the impact that she's had on that game. A beautiful finish to make it 3 0 for Barcelona. And rightly so, gets cheered off the pitch. And Lika Martins will be looking to make her impact on this game as well. Position of a player, but still the same level of quality. As well, I had a, a good game, finished her chance well, but just causing problems all night for the back four of Arsenal. taken down there was looking for it now Barcelona will push forward once again and Hansen looking for that looping ball here's Lika Martins just close to the post there slightly wide we thought within minutes of coming on she could have got the fourth for Barcelona she had the opportunity just lost the foot in there Williamson wasn't punished for it just lost the balance. Matters, I think, trying to give the goalkeeper the eyes one way and try to slip it into that near post. She had it covered, Zinsberger. You don't see a miss many, Lika Martins. Nice bit of play there from Arsenal to get the ball away from Barcelona. Tobin Heath making that run forward, as is Caitlin Ford. Caitlin Ford finds herself with a, the key to Paris. What a save there. Blocked off the line by Maria Leon. I'll tell you what, what a move that was from Arsenal. Barcelona-esque, and that started with the bravery. And great play from Leah Williamson, who brought the ball out and just passed one and two touch, and they've shown not shown it often, but this is a terrific period of play. Get them for the physicality, just couldn't finish, and it's a terrific defended by Leon in the end. Well, this surely will give this Arsenal side a boost. To try and find a goal back here. Tobin Heath is looking to potentially just be going to get the curl on this ball sends it into the box here's Arsenal get a goal back as well Marnham with the touch on that one it was a perfect delivery from Tobin Heath and Marnham was on the end of it could this be a way back into the game for the visitors well, that's their best period of play I think Arsenal the move that led to the free kick and they were always going to be strong on set pieces and that's about the delivery Somebody, anybody, could have knocked the ball into the back of the net. And I'm talking attackers or defenders, well followed in, bodies forward. And then Arsenal proved to themselves that they can score goals against this Barcelona team. Well, it was the opportunity they needed, Arsenal. It was a fantastic delivery in from Tobin Heath. 
on the end of it. Will this open up the game a little bit more now for Arsenal? To try and find their way in. Yeah, they've been a little bit more direct, and I think they're willing running up, looking forward up front. That makes a difference as well, just a little bit more energy. Since, that, since before this goal went in, Barcelona had only conceded one goal. They'd scored 35 before this match. It's just their second goal they've conceded, which just proves how difficult it really is for teams to try and get anything past this Barcelona side. And there's a yellow card for Caitlin Ford. It's a lot of yellow cards in this game, and it's not actually been a particularly dirty game. The referee's not really given any of the players any sort of chance with the challenges that they've made and that's for both teams Tessa takes the ball so well on her outside foot so God has to foul if she's going to try and get the ball body position balance just the, the particularly these three midfielders you could go around the team but they work so well together well, there's going to be another change for Barcelona, Sinagorjevic makes way. It will be Fridolina Rolfu. has fueled the fire within Barcelona, getting that goal against them. All right, for Arsenal, finds Little, a bit of a short pass. Williamson was there, though. You've got to say, Lucy, Arsenal look like they've got more intent yeah. this second half. And, and more confidence in the passing as well. Williamson. Into the feet of Paris, just trying to find that pass through to Ford. Martins. It's interesting, it's as if Arsenal afforded Barcelona a lot of respect, as they should do, but then went 3-0 down and thought, well, we may as well just go for it. We may as well do what we normally do, and it's had an effect, hasn't it, in a positive way for Arsenal? Well, here is the play you thought might be coming on. Lucy, Kim Little makes way for Mana Iwabuchi. Kim Little's done as well as she can in that midfield area, but so physically tiring chasing around this Barcelona team but Robucci will be looking to get on the ball in those pockets of space that we see here a lot but up until today Mane Robucci had started every Champions League game so far this season for Arsenal in their qualifying rounds she makes her appearance now here's an opportunity all came swinging in absolutely out of nowhere and Martin's got on the end of it oh, it wasn't far away either Good ball in right in front of the defenders, but again, it's just stuck to a task there. The ball given away to Barcelona. Graham Hansen passes it through to Martins. A little bit too much power on that pass. Deas. And it's well cleared away by Arsenal who try and give this opportunity and get further up the pitch. 
There's Heath. Harris and Ford arriving in the box. I thought before the game that the, the way that Arsenal would be proactive against this Barcelona team was to be to hit on the counter and they've just got better and better and I think the triple substitution of the forward players has helped you know, the ones that were on initially had to do a lot of work out of possession but they've been more direct with that ball and tried to work on the counter and, and it's worked to a certain extent one kick swings in from Heath Bucci out to Jordan Nobbs. Marnham just turned and tried to get a shot away. Actually in a good position there, Marnham didn't really have to have the shot there. They had enough bodies up in the area in the final third. Could have just recycled, passed the ball wide. minutes left 10 minutes for Arsenal to see if they can try and find their way back into this match Diaz finds Martins still Martins takes a shot and it was looping a nice bit of curve onto that shot as well but it was wide we know she's capable of Martins cutting in on the right foot and trying to curl the ball into that far corner. Just another threat. One as a substitute wants to get on the score sheet. Williamson driving forward. I think that's made a difference as well. Williamson's intelligent run, running and progressing the ball past the press. It just takes out two or three players and it's worked three or four times now. Lovely ball there from Moritz to try and find Ford. Offside though. I'm not sure the assistant referee was quite up with play, but may have just been on the shoulder there. Caitlin Ford. Slightly offside. So quick these players. Well, the goal scorer for the first goal, Mariona Caldente, is being replaced by another prolific goal scorer in Bruno, Bruna Villamala for Barcelona. Caldente has been absolutely excellent, probably in a field full of excellent players. She's been probably the best one there. And you have to be good. If you've got the shirt for this Barcelona team, then you have to perform, and she's done so tonight. Lika Martins will pick up this loose ball. A little bit of a nudge in the back. Lika Martins! Four for Barcelona! She came on as a substitute and instantly makes an impact. And Barcelona are flying now. She's threatened it a few times, hasn't she? It's quite a high line. She timed a run to perfection just behind Williamson and then great touch inside. So difficult to then defend against and really composed finish. Exactly what we'd expect from her. She's been sat on the sideline throughout this game thinking she wanted to come on and make her mark on it and she's just done so. A great finish by Lika Martins. Make it 4-1 to the Spanish side. And surely that is the win under their belts now. Yeah, a little bit of spirit shot from Arsenal after the changes and the goal back, but just step it up again. Here's Iwabuchi. The free kick goes in the way of Barcelona.
It's been a difficult game for Arsenal, but they will have learned a lot about this level. They won't play, needs to get frustrated, but they won't play against any better team. A yellow card there for the Arsenal boss. Here's an opportunity for Arsenal. Tony Heath comes sliding in. Barcelona back to Leon. And I was just losing out that ball. And Mati is taken down there by Tobinis, but the referee says play on. Another one gets himself on the ball. So difficult. She's so slight as well, but the movement and where she positions the ball in relation to her body is so difficult to defend against. Four minutes of normal time left to play. Doesn't even look like this Barcelona side are tiring at all. Vincent to find Paris. Luka Martin's just on that side there, just stopped playing. Unless she hurt a toe. Lovely ball, lovely bit of play there from Graham Hansen into the box. Not many better than Ellen Graham Hansen at one-on-ones in, in the world. And she's actually quite tall, but she just moves the ball well. Just in Martin's goal again, great finish. Since has had a tough night. Had a really tough night. And there's a corner for Barcelona. Quite inventive with a couple of these set pieces so far this evening. Ball comes in, still not cleared. Almost saved by Zinsberger, but it did take another clearance. That was another let off for Arsenal. Yes, is Wolfer to the captain Puteas now. Lika Martins once again up against Lee Williamson as well, just to put her off. Options arriving for Barcelona. This ball through to Martins again. The header was there. Couldn't quite get it on target. Oh, so patient with the build up. Always moving. Difficult to defend against. Yes, right at the, in the heart of that. It's a terrific save. Zinsberg, point blank. Paredes. Thirteen attempts on target for Barcelona. Four of them have found the back of the net. A slightly more possession this second half, Arsenal, and, and they, they look better for it in terms of the more like how they want to play. That's 
Barcelona have been absolutely lethal. Here's Paris. Looking for Ford. Paris again. She's in. Gets taken away. Taken down by Banos. He's only just come back from injury. She's given it as a foul on the goalkeeper. Referee. Yep. Well, Nikita Paris went charging in there, didn't she? You see confirmation. Three minutes of added time. It's a good play again from Arsenal, but it's a 50 50 challenge, and I think she just knocked the ball out of Agnes's hands. Paris was wanting a penalty for that. She said she was foul, but it's clever how the attacking players just make sure they put the feet in the right place. Try and force the referee into a decision. The referee wasn't having it. Well, pretty sure the Barcelona bench will be happy with the display that they've seen this evening. Real statement of intent. This Barcelona side for the rest of the Champions League. Teams to watch on. They are the team to beat. The current holders. And boy, have they shown it tonight. Yeah, they've been absolutely excellent all over the pitch. Barcelona, the way that they move, the way that they overload, they take risks, calculated risks, and it's the their game, they're only concerned about themselves, they're not bothered about the team that they're playing, they just play the way they do, and it's, it's so much better than anybody else around at the moment. Healing forward, just putting the pressure on. The referee. It's frustrating that for, for Arsenal players within the WSL, some of these challenges that probably wouldn't have been a foul in their league. Here come Barcelona again. Looking to add to the tally of goals they've already got on the sheet. Out of play. The Barcelona fans are letting their voices be heard. It'll be a party evening for them this evening. Mati. Foot. Opportunity was there. Couldn't get the connection. Graham Hansen is. Deas gets taken down. Penalty for Barcelona. Jordan Nobbs is furious. The captain was taken down in the box and straight away, without even any thinking, the referee points to the spot. First thought was there, as soon as you lunge and try and win the ball, particularly against players that move the ball quickly, you're always at risk. I think the way that the I think the way that the referee's been tonight, that was pretty obvious that when Jordan Dobbs is saying that she got the ball and probably looked like she got a little bit of the ball, but you, you just know the referee's gonna give a penalty. She's been giving fouls that not particularly fouls in my opinion throughout the game will be the captain, Alexia Pideas. Steps up, saved by Zinsberger. A brilliant save against a player you would 
put your all your trust in to try and get that goal. Yeah, she stood up to it. Tess was expecting her to go down earlier, and it's a great save. And Zinsberger just stood up to. Well, there goes the full time whistle. We've had drama, we've had goals. What a performance from Barcelona. Arsenal looked like they were coming back into it in the second half. Marnham got themselves a goal back. But Barcelona, they were too clinical, they were too ruthless, they were too good for this Arsenal side tonight. Just sum up your full-time thoughts there, Lucy. Yeah, Barcelona were dominant all over the pitch. Arsenal were OK in fits and starts, but it's just so difficult to, to play against this Barcelona team who's just full of world-class players. Lika Martins got herself on the score sheet. She came on as a substitute, made an impact straight away and got that fourth goal for Barcelona. They could have had a fifth with a penalty late on in that match, but it was saved by Zinsberger. And that stopped more heartbreak for Arsenal. It was Mariana Caldente that got the opening goal for Barcelona within the half an hour mark. And it was the captain, Alexia Puteas, who made it 2-0. And then it was the worst possible start to a second half for Arsenal, because it was Asasat Oshuala who made it 3-0. And quite a few changes coming in for Arsenal in that second half, a complete change to the front three for Arsenal. But it was Marnham that converted a fantastic free kick from Tobin Heath. But it was Lika Martins that sealed the win for Barcelona in the end to make it 4-1. And what a statement of intent this has been, Lucy, for the rest of the Champions League groups and teams to watch this Barcelona side. They are absolutely the team to beat. They certainly are. The, the way that they play doesn't change whoever the opposition are, and they just show their dominance, I think, tonight. And then also, of course, more games coming up in the Champions League as well. Possession, of course, more in the side of Barcelona, 65%. Attempts on target, 14. But the total attempts, Lucy, 37. It's ridiculous. Just blew them out of the park, didn't they? Yeah, it, they, they're just relentless. Like I said, overload players. They have midfielders going beyond. Brilliant. Well, it was a perfect evening for the home side, Barcelona, who have absolutely thrashed Arsenal by four goals to one.